Shalom, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Daily Dose of Hebrew. We're looking today at Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 26. Uh, we've noticed in the previous verses, uh, from verse 23 on, that Jeremiah seems to be looking at the land in, in a sort of a prophetic vision, and he's seeing, foreseeing, the destruction that God is bringing against his land because of the people's sin. Um, and it's been sort of the undoing of the creation week, uh, bringing it back to a formless and void condition. Uh, he's been using a similar expression in verses 23, 24, and 25 that he's going to use once again here in verse 26. So let's read the verse as we get started. Raiti vehine har kamel hamidbar vekol arav nitetsu mipene adonai mipene Haron Apu. So in all three previous verses and this verse, he starts with Ra'iti, which is a perfect first common singular. It's cow from Ra'a. So I looked. And behold, now we didn't see this in verse 23 and 24. We did see this in verse 25, the same whole expression in verse 25. I looked and behold. Well, what are you beholding, Jeremiah? Hakarmel, the Carmel. Now, you probably know this as a proper noun, Carmel, which is that region of Israel, uh, which is known for its uh, fertility. It's a very uh, rich land with uh, orchards and uh, for, for cultivation. The Carmel, but it can also be a, uh, a common noun, meaning simply the, the rich land, the, uh, the fertile land, the farm-type land. The Carmel, and then the wilderness or the desert. Well... We have to supply some sort of a verb in here. The the wilderness was a des or the uh, the uh, the fertile land was a desert, uh, or the fertile land became a desert or was transformed into a desert. In any in any case, it's no longer what it once was. It once was fertile and rich, and now it's just simply a wilderness. And all its cities. And you have a suffix. This is a three m s suffix on uh, arai, which is the plural of ir. We can remember sort of an irregular plural. So it's cities, it's the, the cities of this land up here. Um, nitetsu. Now this one's a little bit tricky. If you look at it, you might think, well, is this a PL? Because you've got uh, a, dog, uh, a here, a here, and then a doubling here. Well, that'd be a good guess, but no, it's it's not. You see the U at the end. This is going to be a perfect. It's going to be a third common plural, but it's going to be a nifal. And the nun you see here is the prefix. And it's from the verb na Tats, which means to um, to destroy, to tear down, uh, and in the nifal would be to be destroyed, to be torn down, and so the nun you see here is the prefix of the nifal, and the nun of the root is actually hiding in that little dogish forte there in the tau. So, and all its cities were destroyed from before, literally from the face of. You see a preposition mean there from from the face of Yahweh, and from the face of or. Be, because of, this may actually have a causal sense here, uh, from uh, because of the burning from the root haran, which, uh, which, which means to burn, uh, so from the burning in the construct state, the burning of his, literally of his nostril, but uh, this word af is uh, regularly used for anger with a suffix on the end, third person suffix, singular. Uh, from the burning of his anger, from his burning anger, we could we could translate it that way. So pretty straightforward in its translation. Let's look at a couple of uh, uh, different versions to see what they've done with it. In the uh, ESV, usually a very straightforward translation. I looked and behold, okay, right there. The fruitful land, that's good for Carmel. The fruitful land was a desert. They could have said the desert or the wilderness was a desert. And all its cities were laid in ruins, good translation of Natats here, before the Lord, before his fierce anger. And then in the uh, New English Bible, from the other side of the, the pond there, uh, over in Britain, I saw, and now they didn't translate the, the, uh, the Hine, uh, but that's okay, we can read that under I saw, and the farmland, that's a pretty good translation for Carmel as well, as long as you don't try and restrict it to simply like uh, wheat or corn or something like that, because it can be orchards, it can be any kind of other land as well. Uh, the farmland was wilderness. And, okay, that's that's good for desert, wilderness. And the towns all raised to the ground. So laid in ruins, raised to the ground. That That's actually a good translation of this word here. Before the Lord in his anger. So they've kind of combined before the Lord, before his anger. They've kind of put those both together. Uh, 
the Lord in his anger in that one expression there. And then finally, in Eugene Peterson's The Message, which is very, very much of a paraphrase, as we know, but uh, the, he got it pretty well on this one. I looked, this can't be. This seems to be sort of the, some of the shock value, perhaps, here for Hine that we find here. Um, that's, again, not a translation, but it might bring out a couple good nuances there. Every garden and orchard shriveled up. So the, for Carmo, that's actually pretty good for Carmo because it's garden, orchard, farmland. It's, it's all of those, anything having to do with fertility up there in this, in this region. But it's all shriveled up now. It's now the wilderness or the desert. All the towns were ghost towns. That, that's pretty good for, for this one, except perhaps ghost towns, at least in the popular mind, the town is still standing, the buildings are still there, but the people are gone. Whereas um, Jeremiah seems to be seeing uh, that the towns themselves, uh, he, he said in the previous verse that the people were gone, but here the towns, the buildings themselves seems to be torn down. So it gives the right overall feeling, but maybe not the best uh, a literal application there, but it is a paraphrase. And all of this because of God, because of the blazing anger of God. And he brings that out very clearly. Uh, God's anger and his discipline uh, are not to be trifled with. Uh, he means what he says. Uh, and all of this done in, uh, in love for the purpose of bringing his people back to understand what a serious thing it is to rebel against their God and their creator. Now, God has more to say to his people, and he is going to give them hope in the long run, but he has more to say as we continue our study through Jeremiah chapter 4. So check back with us soon uh, for the weekend edition of the Daily Dose of Hebrew. Shalom.